variations of quite a while. And the con itself uh, varies from group to group. As I understand it, uh, your uh, UI group is primarily uh, uh, air conditioning based. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Commercial industrial. Good. I, I will overlap a little bit just in the format context, but I'll focus as much as I can on uh, air conditioning specifically. Um, to disconnect my email because we're going to get pop-ups throughout. So just bear with me one second here. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Can uh, attendees ask questions or should we pause directly for those? Um, we are muted, so if you guys would type questions in in the um, questions box. And then we will, um, you should be able to see them on your end too if they have questions. And then we can leave some time at the end for questions as well. Okay, perfect. But you're free to type the questions in, in the corner box because we'll see them. Okay. Um, in the history, I think this is relevant for you as a contracting group because your customers are going to have questions. And so you kind of have to have a little bit of the background. So when they come to you and question that you're asking them to make a significant change that that you really know know what's going on. So if you look at this, we you know these were the base of of our industry all the way back to 1920. We phased those out 21 years ago already. It's kind of hard to believe that, but uh, that's how long I've been doing this program. Um, the HF, HCFCs were the hydro Floral fluorocarbons, uh, primarily R22. Uh, we're right up against the phase out. We've got about two and a half years left. Uh, for those of you that do dabble in things other than air conditioning, there's a whole bunch of products uh, in addition to R22 that are on that phase out list. AFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, are the current generation gases. Uh, products like 32, 125, 134, uh, 43. Uh, those are not familiar to you. You probably all have experience with 134A. But those four HFCs are the pure molecules that we use in all the blended refrigerants that we have available today. And up until about two years ago, this was our current generation product. They're now uh, in the process of looking at a phase out or phase down schedule on uh, HFCs, which I'll touch on here in just a little bit. Uh, the newest generation product uh, that we'll talk about towards the end is a product called an HFO, which is a hydrofloral olefin. The uh, key here is there's no chlorine or carbon in this new uh, molecule, and there's a, a whole bunch of activity on that. Most of it is not related to air conditioning at this point, but uh, definitely something that you guys are going to hear about and be uh, uh, get a love here in the next year or two. As before, we only had four pure HFC molecules, 32, 125, 134, and 143. Uh, why that's important is those are the ingredients that go into making all these other gases that that we use, uh, most all of which are considered, all of which are considered blends. Uh, in phrase uh, nomenclature, um, the 100 series refrigerants are called uh, Zeotric blends mean that they're made up of two or more ingredients and they have their own, uh, uh, obtain their own properties, meaning the ingredients don't bond together. And we'll talk about the implication of blends and, and how that factors into your service practices. But the important thing is you want to focus on the R number is assigned by ASHRAE, and once ASHRAE has vetted the product, that pretty much tells you that it's something that they consider to be viable and stable and safe to apply in applications. 
information. Um, the KA name that I show there, these are names that you may have heard of over the years. Uh, uh, MO99, I would expect most of you have probably heard of that. Uh, that was DuPont's private label name for their uh, refrigerant that's now more commonly known as 438A. Uh, in terms of the, and you can see on the other refrigerants, there's the same kind of situation there with their private label names. Uh, into the formulation, look 407 series there for a minute. You'll see there's 407 A, C, and F. There's actually a B, D, and E as well. They're just not commercial in North America. Uh, what makes all those products 407 is that the same three ingredients, in this case 32, 125, and 134. What makes them different, the A through F designation is simply that 47A was the first one X ray recognized, and 47F was the most current product. There's also talk of a 407G that's coming down the line. And as far as where those products fit in, um, the letter designation has nothing to do with application. You know, it doesn't stand for air conditioning. The, the F doesn't stand for freezer. It's strictly a, a sequence digit. And use the same three ingredients. When you turn toward the middle, you're going to see some products you might recognize. Uh, in the 422 series, there's actually 422A through E. And what makes those common is, again, these two ingredients, 32 and 125, and then a small percentage of hydrocarbon, in this case, about 3% of butane. Now, the report. Uh, when when we went from a chlorine containing refrigerant, whether it was a CFC or an EFC, those mo chlorine molecules had a uh, miscibility with mineral or alkabenzene oils. Rid of the chlorine, and with pure HFC, we no longer had that oil miscibility. And we'll talk about oil a little bit later, but in order to avoid making oil change, uh, manufacturers introduce these hydrocarbons into the blend to help uh, put oil return. Now, what I'll show you in a minute is that these, what I'm going to call non-oil change alternatives, uh, come with a, a perfect penalty. And it is because of the hydrocarbon, and it isn't because the butane or propane that they're using is uh, a poor performer, but the, this ingredient right here, R32. Now, not to get too involved in it, but R32 by itself is a high-performing refrigerant molecule. And in fact, uh, in Europe and Asia, they're using, starting to use R32 as a standalone refrigerant. 32 is in, in our world here, it's, it's considered flammable. So there's a, a limit to how to where we can use it. And notice that whenever they introduce an, a hydrocarbon into the blend, they remove the R32. That's the reason that these non-oil change alternatives tend to have lower performance. It's not the uh, because of the hydrocarbon, it's the fact that the R32 can't General coexist with the hydrocarbon. Now, one exception to that is here is this 99 or the 438A, very small percentage of R32, so a really small percentage of hydrocarbon. They're using a, a bit of uh, two different types of butane here, and so it does perform a bit better. Uh, but it's also the most sensitive to oil return issues. And again, we'll we'll spend more time in a minute here talking about oil, and hopefully it'll bring this all together. So when you look at a refrigerant, and I'm going to talk about here here just for a minute. I know that's not your focus, but you'll you'll see the the uh, the, the time here in just a second. Uh, when looking at a conversion from 20 to, to one of these alternatives, there's a couple of factors you have to consider. 
Um, the first one uh, is the capacity. Now, when you evaluate the capacity of a refrigerant, it's extremely important that you look at the operating conditions, and these need to be relevant to the system you're operating at. Uh, a product is going to work very well at plus 40 suction, but probably different performance at zero or minus 20. So in this case, these are temperature refrigeration specs typical to a supermarket. What you'll see is you have a few products here that have capacity that are very close with R22, and then you have other products here that for quite a bit of capacity loss. 404, for example, was a very high uh, volume retrofit gas for supermarkets for about 10 years because it had good capacity. It's been around for a long time uh, and so on. For an A and F came on a little bit later and you'll see the, the capacity relative to 22 is, is still pretty good. Uh, 